How many um, how many fans and uh, media Eddie are asking you about Conor McGregor these days? It happens quite often, you know. Um, I'm experiencing the other end of like what I have done to opponents. I'm sure Dos Anjos gets asked about me, and guys that I've beaten are always asked about me. You kind of, I said it after the Conor fight. When you are defeated by a guy, it's almost like you get a tattoo of that man right on your chest and you got to deal with it for the rest of your life. So um, knowing that moving forward, you just do everything you can to win. You know, you just try to win so you don't get that stupid tattoo on your chest. <laughs> and it's a it's a big <laughs> tattoo when it's Connor. Yeah. You know, it's exactly. not it's not like like losing, you know, as you're coming up the ranks and, and people forget about the fight. That's that was the fight that he won his second championship on. And um yeah, I mean, there's really. Yeah. Have you been frustrated before, and then you've just accepted it? Do you, do you kind of go through different like uh, periods with it in terms of how annoyed you get when people are constantly asking you about the guy? I know. I, I never. I never really get an, an annoyed. I've dealt with it myself. I forgave myself for it, and I moved on. Sometimes things during during the regular day will happen, and I'll just kind of think, be back in that moment, and go, God damn it. Um, but, uh, <laughs> then it goes away. I'm pretty much forgave myself for it. It's over with, uh, will, it, I mean, it's history, so it'll live. But, uh, like I said, um, it doesn't define me as, as a fighter. My wins don't define me. My losses don't define me. And, um, what other option do I have is the only other option I have is to feel nothing at all. And, uh, I'd never do that. I'd rather go out. And be vulnerable to some glory or vulnerable to some disappointment. Do you, uh, does that feel like it was yesterday or does it feel like it was a long time ago, that fight? Uh, uh, it feels long, uh, yeah, it feels long ago for me. A lot of things happened since then for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, Connor's out here in Las Vegas. You know, he's going to be here around, you know, you're here, he's here. You th did you ever think about, like, Oh, what if we run into each other out here? You know, are you how much or how much attention are you paying to what he's doing right now? No, I actually been watching the um. I'm sitting back with some popcorn, man. I've been, I've been, re I'll be lying. I'm really enjoying this uh, the tour they've been to. <laughs> it's, I, I tell my wife the the most comical thing for me when I watch even when I watch movies is the guy who's like so so crazy confident about himself, like with the mink jacket and. The, for, to me, that is so – they're so funny. I wish I could be like that. As a fighter, I'm like, man, I wish I could do that because then I can make people laugh. <laughs> but I, I can't. It's just not – it's not my style. It's his, and I'm glad he does it because, I mean, we need that. We, yeah. We need guys so, like that. <laughs> so, Eddie, uh, since since you've been watching it and enjoying it, who do you – which fighter do you think uh, came out of the world tour better off? Oh, I, I, I think Connor's just a more intelligent. Um, he's more witty. Uh, Floyd's stuff is, um, I don't know. I just, I, there's no, uh, I don't think there's a lot of intelligence behind it. It's, it's kind of, to me, I think Connor's a more intelligent <laughs> talker. I think, I think I would get, I would have gave it to Connor. I heard he flopped his last one. I didn't hear the last one, but, um, as even the first one off the cuff, I thought he did an amazing job. Like they kind of threw him for a loop. They said, and he got right up on the mic. And I mean, he wasn't uh, uh, and stuttering. He he went right with it. He's he's great at what he does, man. And I think, in like he does get a lot of hate, but the truth is, um, he followed what Floyd did. Floyd knew his only way to control things is to control his own content. Connor right away was controlling his own content, making that Mac show or whatever it is. When you control your own content as a fighter, that's the real value. I mean, that that's the value in you and, and the business. Um, so I, I think uh, some people should keep their eyes out. If they want to control their destiny and control their paychecks and things like that, the content is it seems to be the key. Eddie, when you're talking about uh, his confidence and he walks up and he's a showman and he's got the mink suit on and everything, and he, he did that with you and in, in famously now in New York. Yeah. So when you look back on that, what are your what <laughs> what effect did it have on you and 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 I don't know. What do you think about it now? So like, if anybody if anybody knows if you know me, 
like my you know the people are close to me knows inside inside like i'm dying i'm laughing inside um but the i'm not saying the the argument between me and connor and what happened on stage was about as genuine as it gets do i hate connor mcgregor no i don't even know connor mcgregor but the debate is you can beat me and that's a belief and I can beat you, and that's a belief. It's 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 the same difference to argue in religion and politics. We have a disagreement, a legit one. I can beat you up, you can beat me up. No, I have a deep belief in myself. You have a deep belief in yourself. So for people to say, "Oh, that's just all bullcrap," they're 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 just doing it to get fans. No, they're not. This guy believes he can beat him, and this guy believes. So the it's a genuine argument. And one to be had, the same as religion, same as politics. And um, that doesn't mean they don't like each other. Politicians shake hands and um, people from different religious groups are not going to kill each other. But um, they can have a belief and have a disagreement and talk about it. And that's what's happening right now with their world tour. And that's what happened with us in Madison Square Garden. The guy, he's on the same journey I am. We're just martial artists. And I'm um, trying to see what we got. You know? When you're going up against a guy who's who's just naturally gifted at that, though, which which you know he is, and you've said he is, do you feel like, and the crowd is reacting to everything that he says, and they're occasionally not reacting to what you say? It, you guys are competitors, you know. And people ask me this, you know, like what effect could that press conference have on a fighter? And what I say is, these guys are competitors, and you're going to lose lose quote unquote a press conference to Conor McGregor. And maybe that'll affect you in a fight. Is that fair? Is that a tr good way of looking at it? Yeah, I think if it may affect you if you're early in the sport. Like if Connor was fighting a 20 year old kid who's just coming into the sport, making his UFC debut, I could see that having a profound effect on his performance in the fight. But I don't see it happening to a veteran. Like understanding that words are just words. After a while, after 10 opponents say they're going to knock you out and you go out there and choke them out or knock them out i think you get the drift that the words are just meaningless and the training and the preparation is everything so um a guy who's young yeah i can see i can see it working on him. so how uh how interested are you in this in this mayweather mcgregor fight you were interested in the press conferences are you interested in the oh, fight itself uh, hell yeah i am I hell yeah. I watch Kimbo Slice and Data Five Thousand. I oh, no. I'm the biggest fight. Yeah, sorry fan. to hear that. I'm the biggest fight fan. You can you can I'll watch any fight. I'll if two construction workers are fighting on the side of the road, I'll pull my phone out and tape it, <laughs> and then I'll, I'll show it to everyone and say I, I I just like watching fights. And when they have this much build up around them, um, I, I enjoy it. Uh, I'm gonna I'm going to the fight. I'll be there front row. Really? Yeah. I've I've uh. I have a buddy who uh, my buddy sold me sold me his house uh, got front row seats so we'll be there front row. Aren't those tickets like forty fifty thousand dollars? That's amazing. This guy I'm talking about has fu money. <laughs> All right, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> we're we're coming we're coming to Vegas on a private jet and we're we're landing and we're going we'll be we'll be front row. Wow, so so I, I, I believe he got them through charity. I think he gave to a charity and it was at a charity event. I was gonna say, is your friend the president of the United States sitting front row and Mayweather McGregor on the private jet? <laughs> you friends with Trump? Is that who it is? Sold you yeah. your house? He's a he's a big deal. Huh. Guy's, a, guy's a big deal. All right, so how do you see it on, on unfolding? You know, knowing Connor obviously the way you do. The sports in general, the way you do, what is the fight going to look like? I, my, my, I believe I heard people with with similar assessments as mine, uh, as mine, which um, it would be. Connor has about three or four rounds to get this done, and when this comes down to being a technical boxing match, which is usually around round four. Between between round five and twelve, it usually goes to the more technical boxer. I think within them four rounds, if you don't think Connor can knock this guy out, you're an idiot, or you just don't know fighting because it can very well happen. Um, if he doesn't get it done by then, it could look very one-sided. The mm. the technical boxing of Floyd Mayweather is enough to make it look really one-sided for for him, but uh. Connor, there is a, a very real chance that he can put him away.
You ever think uh, you and Connor will cross paths again, sitting here today? I hope so. I hope so. Um, there's some things I would change. There's some things that I would want to make right, and um, I, I really hope so. It's it's a small probability, I, I think, but uh, if it could, I would. I'd be blessed to to be able to get back in there and redeem myself. Last question I have is, uh, it actually goes back to the press conferences, and that is one thing that, that Connor got uh, flack for was uh, uh, some comments that he made that could be seen as uh, some racist, having some racist tendencies to them. Uh, the dance for me, son, um, dance for me, boy, you know, and then when he tried to follow that up in Brooklyn, his jokes on that kind of fell flat. Um, you know, and, and, and I've been talking to other media members of this, mainstream media members of this, working at ESPN, you know, the, the, I'll be on radio shows or whatnot. And one question stuck out to me that I was asked by Sarah Spain, actually. And she said, do our, our fighters just held to a completely different standard than other fighters? And I mean, Dana White has come out and basically said, yes. I mean, we're not talking about um, basketball here. We're not talking about baseball. We're talking about two guys getting in a ring exchanging blood with one another you're going to hear some different things than you than you would hear in a basketball uh contest you know and it really did get me thinking of like well there's that part of it and then there's also the part that they are selling the fight and so that if they can bring in some kind of controversial elements to it or some nationalistic elements to it it could sell it better like what what, what do you think do you think that as a combat sports athlete you are allowed or even encouraged to say things that that you wouldn't be saying in, in other you know ball sports I think it depends on the kind of uh, role model you want to be. <laughs> it's up to you. If you want to be seen as a racist, then say racist things. If you don't want to be seen as a racist, then whatever. But it's clearly up to you uh, whether – I mean it's wrong. Uh, like my feeling toward it is it's wrong. But uh, I, I really believe that it, <laughs> fist fighting is a very serious, dangerous sport. And any kind of mental edge or whatever I can do – to 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 get the edge, I'm gonna do, but uh, racism it's it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. There's no there's no reason for it. Um, it's really the people watching. They can view it however they want to view it, and some people just like to be controversial. And there's nothing more controversial that's gonna sell tickets than racism. You know what I mean? So maybe maybe people are viewing it as as racist, and if they are then this thing's going to sell a whole lot of tickets, <laughs> like a, a lot more than what we thought it was going to. Yeah, and I guess that that, that adds on to what I, I asked you, is that uh, if you knew that you could say something that was pushing the lines of racism, it's not outright, you know, crazy stuff, you know, but you knew that you could push it a little bit and get people talking, and you knew that if you did, it would sell, you know, half a million more pay-per-views to your fight. Would you do it? Just knowing that, like, like I don't believe this. This is not really who I am. I'm, I'm not setting a good role model. But hey, I got a family at home. If this is gonna sell half a million more pay-per-views, would you say it? I, I think it's important up there just to be genuine. So I think Connor's not doing anything but saying what he would say. I, he's not a guy who says I'm not gonna say that because it's gonna get this reaction. He's a guy who says I'm gonna do this, and I don't give. What reaction I'm gonna get, and that's what makes that's what makes it so special.